The mortar does not store well in untemperature controlled environments like my shop. It's stated on the bags about how many blocks you can lay per bag, but I decided that I'd at least make two trips. That way I don't get lumpy mortar by the time I'm finished with this project. And you go through so much more of this mortar than you'd think. Uh, it definitely doesn't go very far. So I've got an issue that I need to address. Actually, probably several. But anyway, the one that I want to share with you today, or at least right now, is this section of the floor that's got to come out. It's a, it, right in the middle of the doorway. When this floor broke in this shop originally, it kind of broke crazy up here near the front. It definitely didn't take a perfectly straight line. So let me show you what I got, and we'll bust it out and uh, talk about maybe fixing it, how I plan to fix it. Could cause me some issues, I don't know. Let me show you. We'll get started on it. So when this floor broke, the vast majority of the crack went straight down the building, right on the other side of this support wall, all the way to the back. But right up next to the front of the building, the crack veered off and pretty much went to the middle of the doorway. Which is not good, but that's the way it worked out. Um, you know, it'd been nice if this would have been on the back side like that instead of on the front. But whatever. This section has to be removed. Hopefully you can see that I've got a cut line in this. It's just a right angle. Um, that is was cut years ago, so I can't tell you how well I did on it, but it's got to be removed. I'm pretty sure I've done a decent job on it, but I want to get this out without damaging the floor on the opposite side of the cut because it's staying. And uh, I'm going to be using the jackhammer, so hopefully this will go relatively smooth. Let's see if we can't get this piece out. So this hammer's been sitting around, I don't know, since the last time I used it, um, and that's been a little while ago. Let's put some professional grease on the chisel before we get started and uh, you know, try to keep this thing running as long as we can. If this will finish the project, this will be such a, a worthwhile investment. We'll have been. useful this is but couldn't be couldn't hurt anything much concrete dust gets blowed up into that joint use a wire and a paper towel maybe some solvent and spray it out as well Go. 
There we go. It come loose. Good. I don't think I broke anything I didn't mean to. Tree frog. stop in this corner so I didn't cut way back in here. Oh, the world is some people's trash can. So they think. So my neighbor's supposed to come get all this. Uh, he's got some drainage uh, issues that he wants to address up here, some erosion issues. And, and uh, he asked if he could have it. I said, sure, I'm done with it. So I'm not for sure if this will present a problem or not. This floor, once it's poured, being all monolithic, one piece, um, and then this portion hanging off here, I'm not for sure if that'll cause a cracking issue or not. As long as this is good and compact under this section, it shouldn't, but I don't know. I may have to do something. I'm not for sure. What do you think? There's one of my many leaks in the roof. There's like 30 of those. So I don't ever remember if I showed this drain in action or not, the one that me and Al installed, I don't know, a month or two ago. But it's working really well, and I'm really pleased with the way that it's moving water. You can see all this water that's on the upper side of the shop. It used to run straight past all this gravel that it's backed up against and down through the driveway, making a trench. But uh, luckily now, uh, it's working. We'll see how long it lasts till it clogs, but for now, it's good.
is the first time I've seen peanut in three days. I'm a little bit worried. Encourage and bad habits. <laughs> Fighting mom, get it. So I think it'd be hard to find two more different squirrels than peanut and walnut. Uh, peanut being the first squirrel, big large female that hangs around and then this being walnut, uh, the little young male. This guy wants to play fight constantly. He loves it when you shake your hand or your arm. It just uh, makes him go crazy and he runs around and bites and bounces. Peanut wasn't quite like that. She was more laid back you know, and just wanted to be rubbed on. But <laughs> this little guy's a lot of fun. I really will miss him when he's gone. He's gotten so big, so fast. <laughs> so here's a job that was a ton of work, and that's grouting this lower wall solid. Now this needs grouted solid simply because I'm going to be drilling into it to put the pins in it or the rebar in it to help support my floor. You wouldn't have to grout every cell, but that's what I'm doing. And uh, it's a little more work than I thought it would be. But bless you. I'm almost done. Probably a good day's worth of work left. So I completely understand why people build metal buildings and block is kind of something that you don't see is used in construction much anymore, at least in my area. All the buildings are going that are going up are usually metal buildings. They're just a hundred times quicker to build, probably, and cheaper, I'm sure. And if properly cared for, probably last just as long as these. So it's almost getting dark, so that's before daylight, and I'll be after dark tonight. I laid block until I got tired of doing that, and then I started mixing and pouring concrete, trying to... Well, I filled the back wall, every other cell, all the way up to where I'm done, or to where I've stopped laying block so far, and then uh, got halfway down the long wall, uh, filling every cell. And there's still a lot more to go on, but I ran out of uh, sand, so got to get more sand before I can mix more concrete.
So Elizabeth went out to start her little Kia, the car that I built from a total wreck probably six months ago uh, the other day, and turned the key and it was nothing but click, click, click. And so this is the first problems that we've had with this little car since we've been driving it. And uh, come to find out, it's the starters out of it. I did watch a couple videos, and it's making a clunking noise in the front end when you hit a bump. So we've got to investigate that as well. But from the videos that I watched, uh, you know, people <laughs> were not impressed with the placement of the starter on this thing and said it was pretty difficult. But luckily, I had a very good assistant to help me on this uh, one. Yeah, and is that lower control arm bad as well? So here's underneath the car. Just notice that it's also got a bad ball joint out here on the control arm. Wiggle that, Elizabeth, please. You can see it moving there. Yeah. Right in this joint here. Uh, this shouldn't happen, at least not to that extent. So, this entire lower control arm has to be replaced as well, which is actually much easier than changing a starter. And I wish that's all I had to do. Uh, this is one of those where you can't get to it from the top, and you can't get to it from the bottom. Not easily, anyway. So maybe now. I can see it. I don't think it'd be a ton easier with the, even the intake manifold on. I mean, you could get to the to the battery terminal or to the power terminal on the back of the starter, but oh my! All these hoses in the way. Hoses, shift the cable. Oh, it moved. Watch it slip off. Just totally gnarly, man. Man. Uh, I'm about an inch away from retotaling this car out with this ratchet. Too tight to screw out with your fingers. Almost too loose to use a ratchet on. I love it when they're like that. And that top nut's kind of caged in there to where there's no clearance really between the the uh, top of the bolt and then the bell housing of the transmission so if you screw it out too much you can't get the ratchet off oh, wow it has to come out all the way over here at least it can come out there it is man it was a pain Probably have to change it four or five times before I get a good one. Oh, well. So I was so glad that Elizabeth was willing to help me change the starter on this thing. I tried to reach the starter from the bottom of the car from crawling under it, but my arm was too Look big over. to even reach up and touch it uh, in any uh, useful manner anyway. Yeah. And uh, you could only get one arm, or at least I could, down from the top to work on it. So to reinstall this starter, she had to hold it in place from the bottom while I screwed the bolts in from the top. Otherwise, you know, you'd have had to remove the intake or the exhaust, maybe the uh, one of the CV axles okay, in order right to just yeah. you know, get two hands on the thing to get it installed. My secret weapon to changing hard to get starters is having access to a set of micro hands. <laughs> so there's the old starter off this thing. Uh, they're proud of them. Now I put a, reman a remanufactured starter, rebuilt starter, uh, basically, on this thing. 
Uh, I don't recommend that for most people, especially if you're paying somebody to change them because a lot of times it's cheaper just to put a new starter on there and you, then you, chances are you're going to get a good one. But I've had bad experience with these remands. Now, on this one, there's a considerable price difference between a new starter and just a you know, midline remand. And for me, doing the work myself, it's worth it. I mean, I can change this thing in 30 minutes probably. Uh, but I've seen videos where guys were pulling the intakes off of them, pulling the exhausts off. I can see why. Uh, it's tough, but it will fit out uh, of these little Kias if you snake it along the firewall and go up beneath the uh, um, brake booster. You can get them out without taking off a ton of extra stuff. Uh, it's, it's a tight squeeze, but uh, it happens. So I'm going to change the lower control arm on this, but I'm going to take it over to my brother's. He's got a lift uh, to do that. I'm not going to work on this gravel any more than I have to. For a good old fashioned used form lumber pile burn, if that's such a thing. Um, I'm just tired of tripping over this stuff. A little, little bit of go juice on here to help things get rolling. Don't worry, Karen. It just rained. Everything's really wet. So I'm definitely getting low on blocks. I'm, I've started using the end blocks that have the gap in them up high. Uh, not that it even matters, to be honest. This face of the block wall won't even be seen, this front face here, uh, because it'll be capped with lumber, and then you know, this will be wood framed, the open section here. So it won't matter. I'm gonna fill that uh, void with mortar. <laughs> they don't even need it, but that's what I'm gonna do. So the only faces that'll be seen will be the inside here and the outside and nobody's going to look at the outside. So in order to get these top blocks in, it's kind of a pain. You gotta put them in place, uh, stack washers underneath them, and then uh, pump the mortar uh, in the gap. That's the only way you can do it, because you can't put mortar on them and then slide the block in. It just rakes the mortar off. So, but everything's lining up good. Really happy with the way it's turned out.
this row is going to be a pain in the butt. So the back wall is done, basically, other than some touch-ups. You can see where I uh, stacks of washers. It's kind of dark back here, but you get the idea. And as the block, or as the mortar stiffens where to hold the blocks, I just move them on down. You know, it doesn't take very long. But it looks pretty good. This back wall is complete, like I said, other than some touch-ups. You know, once it's dry and I wash these blocks down, it'll look good. It'll look like the rest of it. So aren't you glad I showed you <laughs> how that can be done? That way, when it comes time for you to never have to do this, you'll know what to do. Alright guys, that's it this week. Feels good to have this wall at least up. It's not complete. Still a lot of detail work that has to be done before I can call it complete. Like attaching the roof to this wall, that has to be done. We'll talk about how I plan to do that in the future. And um, I've got uh, a plan in motion that should work just fine. But it, it complicates things when you do <laughs> stuff in reverse. Like build a wall under your roof. Got to lay a couple courses on the long wall and finish up the front wall and then get ready to start framing up this uh, support wall so I can remove this temporary support wall. Get my floor in. Ready. So that's it. My wife Elizabeth said thanks for all the birthday wishes she received last week. Uh, she appreciated that very much and so do I. That's it. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. Anybody who's supporting me on this project, definitely appreciate it. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.